Welcome back. I hope you were able to get a bit of a break and get something to drink, something to eat, and you are back in your seat and ready to go. Let me tell you what a time we have had so far today and yesterday. So now we're about to have Second City uh, City Improvisation Theater come on and provide us with the second half of their presentation. If you weren't here on yesterday to hear it, you missed an absolute treat. We were able to see in real time how important active listening is when communicating with others. We also learned how to find ways to keep the conversation moving forward, even when it's difficult to do so. And most importantly, we learned how to say yes and instead of leaving a conversation without a positive resolution. So today, let's learn how to tell a great story. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you so much for that uh, wonderful introduction. Uh, we were going to start off with a recap, but it, it uh, sounds like you've gotten a fantastic recap on what we covered yesterday. So that will give us a little bit more time to do some more exercises this morning. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is um, let's let's get our chats open, and um, we're going to move our bodies around a little bit. We're going to do some yoga poses, but these are going to be yoga poses that we've never heard of before. So in the chat, I'd love it if you could go ahead and su suggest some names of poses that have never been created before. So. Um, Oh, the hippo upward clown. Okay, these are great. This is the exact twisted kid. This is exactly what we need. So what we're going to do, Leslie and I are going to take turns um, displaying these poses. Feel free to join us at home. And we're going to talk you through what each pose does and how it helps our bodies. So uh, let's see. Um, I really liked uh, the twisted kitten. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how the twisted kitten is done. Um, Raising. <clears throat> so the twisted kitten, is, um, is, is great for a morning stretch because what you have to do is you, you get your claws ready for any kind of an imminent attack. So this is telling your body to get ready for whatever the day might hand you. Uh, this is also a great move in case you need to carry your briefcase in one hand, coffee in the other. So it's a really great morning preparation uh, pose in the morning um, just to get you ready for the day. That's Twisted Kitten. Fantastic. That felt great. <laughs> now I'm going to go, Ooh, I'm going to go with a seal on a rock because that's, that's what I see. So, so seal on a rock. So of course the seal on the rock, you can't quite see, see my floor here, but so we're just going to do it sort of in midair. The seal on the rock is a real, is really about curving sort of that, that lower back and giving that lower back like a nice, a nice stretch. Well, you sort of put your flippers for lack of a better term um, out in front. Now, as we know, seals like to, are, are very joyous creatures. So the real part of this move is once you're in that position, you're sort of arching that lower back just a little bit, not too much, just so you feel the stretch. Then you just clap those flippers. And you know, that really helps, um, you know, start to get the blood flowing and really prepares you for a joyous day. That's what the seal on a rock is all about. Hmm. Wonderful. Okay, great. Um, I am going to go ahead. Uh, I like, um, I like the pacifist warrior. Mm -hmm. The pacifist warrior is, uh, is very similar to the active warrior, except in this case, we do nothing but stand <laughs> here with our hands ready to go, um, fingers pointed out so that the fingertips can absorb any kind of attack because we're not going to actually be engaging in attack. We're just going to be receiving it as a pacifist warrior. It's a great, um, it's a great stretch actually for your shoulders as well. Um, if you look past your fingertips, it reminds you to look forward to, to the day as well. So it's about clearing your mind and thinking ahead to what, what life may bring. And in case it brings an attack, your fingertips are ready to absorb any kind of impact. Wow. It is good to always be ready for any impact. I'm really feeling that. Good. Yes. Great. Yes. <laughs> Good. Oh, I see a couple of great ones here. I'm going to go back just a bit because I really enjoyed the flummoxed clergy. So flummoxed, I think we know what it means. So uh, we're a little bit uh, discombobulated, maybe a little bit um, 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 frustrated. So the way you embody that is you sort of get into a little bit of a squat. So sort of legs out and you're just, just squatting down just a little bit. And then you really bring those arms up and then it's a very um, fluid movement. 
um, because this clergy is, is very flummoxed by all the things they have to deal with um, today. They have meetings, they have uh, uh, things to prepare, they have people calling into the office. And this is sort of a way of I'm dealing with them all one thing and then the next thing and then the one thing and the next thing. And this flummoxed clergy manages to deal with all the balls in the air. That's what's going on here. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Great. Ooh. Thank you. Well, I'm going to, I have one last, I'd love to do this oh. one last stretch. Um, this one is going to be the clumsy boss. Yes. <laughs> I love the clumsy boss because it's a very, very, it's very similar to the flummox clergy. It's a very active pose. Um, so it's going to start with a finger point, right? You did that wrong. And then it comes with a punch across the face. <laughs> You're going to be, yeah, so finger point, punch across the face. And the punch across the face is going to be you. And the punch across the face is, is um, not intentional. The punch across the face is, is supposed to be another attempt at pointing at somebody else across the room. But the finger is caught in the thumb and as a result catches the side of your face. So again, finger point, punch across the face. Finger point, punch across the face. Um, this movement is, it's a little bit controversial because in yoga circles, we feel like it was something that uh, was grounded in our philosophies. In some um, martial arts circles, they feel like this was actually one of their moves because it is, mm -hmm. it is quite popular. It's a distraction move and then you cross cut across someone's face. So, you know, I, I, uh, I really like this move because it, it does get your blood flowing and it does actually burn a few extra calories. Oh, fantastic. And I mean, it really embodies what, what would happen with a, a clumsy boss trying to give too many orders, you know, at the same time. It really feels real to me. Yeah. 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 Thank you. That was great. <laughs> we hope that some of you at home uh, got up and did those with us, or maybe you just enjoyed uh, watching us, us warm up. But certainly my heart rate's lifted just a little bit. Um, so we want to do another um, activity, get your fingers ready for the chat, another sort of warm up for us today. Um, oh dear. Oh, somebody had surgery on their big toe yesterday due to clumsiness. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hope that heals quickly. That's right. I um, hope you weren't oh. using your toes to point. Yes, yes. Or maybe you won't in the future now that you've learned that <laughs> lesson. Um, so uh, this one, this activity is called 99 blanks. And basically, it, it's a joke generating game, right? So basically, it works the way we might say, you know, 99 ducks walked into a bar, and the bartender said, hey, we don't serve your kind in here. And the duck said, well, that's quacked. I didn't say it was a good joke. I said it was... <laughs> It's a joke. Yay! So basically, it's a pun generating joke game. So we're going to be looking for some suggestions of 99 what's walked into a bar. Then we're going to use that same formula. Oh, good. They're already coming in. Fantastic. Ayumi and I are going to do some of these for you. But much like yesterday with World's Worst, if you want to get in there and put your own jokes in, uh, please do. Uh, so first, oh, I, I had to go. Oh, God, these are so great. These are so great. Okay, let's go with uh, let's go with whales first. I like that. That was that was near the top. So let's go with 99 whales. Okay, so uh, 99 whales walked into a bar and the bartender said, Hey, we don't serve uh, your kind in here. And the whales said, Well, that really blows. <laughs> Uh, 99 whales uh, walk into a bar, bartender says, sorry, we don't serve your kind here. The, the bartender said, uh, the 99 whales say, why not? And the bartender says, because you guys are so fishy. Yes, yes. Um, all right. Uh, uh, oh, let's pick a new one because those were both so good. I don't know that I can, I can, I can beat, um, beat those. These are all great. I kind of wanted to go with 99. Um, we had uh, church members. Let's see what, what happens there. Okay. I have no plan, but this is truly improv. 99 church members walk into a bar and the bartender says, hey, we don't serve your kind in here. And the church members say, well, I, I, we, we, we're giving, we're, no praise for you on Yelp. <laughs> All right, uh, 99 church members walk into a bar. The bartender says, sorry, we don't serve your kind here. The 99 church members say, why not? And the bartender says, pew, 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 pew. Pew, like trick pews. Oh, pew. <laughs> do you love my face? I was like, wait, I get it. <laughs> yes, thank you. Please give us some, some LOLs. Uh, uh, <laughs> we need them. We need them. Um, oh, somebody wrote one for us. 99 church members and the church members respond, that's okay. We serve your kind at church. Very nice. So they, they turned it around and said, you might not want to, you know, give us a mojito. I 
keep referring to mojitos these past few days, but we will certainly serve you at church. That's very nice. Um, all right, let's grab a couple more. Uh, okay, we've got, um, how about uh, light bulbs? Something pretty basic? Okay. 99 light bulbs walk into a bar and uh, the bartender says, hey, we don't serve your kind in here. And the light bulb says, well, that's a turn off. We're thinking alike because I was thinking 99 light bulbs walk into a bar. The bartender says, sorry, we don't serve your kind here. The 99 uh, light bulbs say, why not? And the bartender says, because you guys are always uh, turning off. <laughs> <You're crazy. laughs> it was different in my head. And when it came out, it came out differently than, than, than what I was thinking. Absolutely. Um, why don't we challenge the room to one and see what people can maybe come up with in the chat? That might be fun. Because uh, you always get totally lit. There it so is. That was more what I had in my mind and it came out the opposite. So thank you, Amanda. That's great. I also enjoyed, and the light bulbs say, well, that's dim. That was great. Thank you, Debbie, for that one. Um, all right. Uh, let's do one more. And you know what? Uh, um, to all of the 238 people in the room, let's put it back to you. Can you write one about 99? Um, sloth. Sloth. Oh, sloth? I just saw. Yes, sloths. I was going to say that. All right, everybody, 99 sloths walk into a bar and the bartender says, hey, we don't serve your kind in here. And then, and the slots say, let's see what, can anybody come up with something? What do those slots say back? <laughs> it's one of slow gin fizz. Cheryl. The very first one. O dot 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 K dot 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 fine. It was also <laughs> Fine, just hanging around. Just wanted to hang out. Those are all mm -hmm. amazing. Carrie, Mary, L, all had the same. Uh, Julie, <laughs> yeah, you guys are thinking alike. We love it. Mary, nothing. They fell asleep because mm -hmm. they're lost. Oh, they're so sweet. Amazing. I think we got some solid. Oh, and I bet they're key gaps. Uh, well, slimy. I'll just go back where I came from. That was a. I, I like that. That sloth has a little bit of edge to edge to them. <laughs> they say fine, but it's going to take a long time to leave. <laughs> It's fuzzy logic because they're so fuzzy. Oh, and I have to say Lisa's because they the sloths go, but we are woke. That's great. <laughs> Just normally sleep, they're awake, they're woke. It's great. That's really good. Um, yes, that one deserved an LOL, Gina. You're absolutely right. Um, thank you all. That is 99 blanks. I think we we uh, we really um, destroyed that exercise with uh, all kinds of amazing things. So thank you so much. Okay. Oh, okay. So yesterday, uh, you got to learn a little bit about us with the two truths and a lie. You're going to learn a little bit more. We're going to do another two truths and a lie, and then we're going to open up to you guys. So uh, for me this morning, my two truths and a lie. Um, the first thing is I saved a drowning man in Hawaii. The second one is my family has two world records. The third one is my team set a record on the game show America Says. What? So the first one is I saved a drowning man in Hawaii. The second one is my family has two world records. And the third one is uh, my team set a record on the game show America Says. What is the lie? Okay, I'm writing down a guess this time because I didn't write it down yesterday. Ooh, a lot of game show America Says. World records. I think they're suspicious of you because of the car win yesterday. That's right. Yeah. Family records, drowning man. Oh, now it's now it's coming. Now it seems like a a little bit uh, even. Yeah, game show. So uh, okay. So the first. So America says is I don't know if you're familiar. It's sort of like Family Feud type show, uh, which I played with a bunch of other fellow Canadians. One of them being Leslie Siler's husband, and we did set a world uh, a record for the show for the the um, playing a perfect game. Uh, so that is true. Uh, the second thing, uh, my family does have two two world records. Uh, one for oldest domestic starling. You can look that up. Uh, starlings are uh, a small uh, wild bird. And uh, my nephew um, solved the pyraminx. It's a type of Rubik's cube. Uh, and he broke a record. I think it was like two years ago. That record has since been beaten, but it was a world record when he broke it. Uh, and then the third one is I have not saved a drowning man in Hawaii, but I did save a choking man in uh, Niagara Falls. Wow. <laughs> okay, I, I did say I got it right. I did write down drowning man. That was my guess. Um, 
but I'm very, I mean, and when we have more time later, we'll hear the story about the uh, choking Niagara Falls. Okay. <laughs> um, so a lot of you got that right. That was great. All right, here's mine. Here we go. <clears throat> okay. I have a bachelor's degree in education with a minor in English literature. Um, I have won four Canadian Comedy Awards. I swear to God, they're a real thing, the Canadian Comedy Awards. Um, and I have been to the very exclusive Club 33. Anyone who's a Disneyland fan will know this. There's a, very, there's a private club at Disneyland called Club 33, and I got to go there twice last year. So again, do I have a bachelor's degree in, edu in education, minor in English Lit? Have I been to Club 33 twice? Or have I won four Canadian Comedy Awards? What is the lie? Yes, Club 33 does seem implausible. So I get it. If you're guessing that, you're, you're a good guesser. I'm not saying it's true or not, but I'm just saying degree. A lot of people do not believe I have this degree. You're very wise. Awards, yeah, okay, all right. Four awards, I know four feels like a lot. I know, I know. Well, believe it or not, I have been to Club 33 twice in one year. It was very exciting. They were both very weird happenstances, but uh, yes, lucky you, I know. It was as uh, shocking to me. I thought I would never go in my lifetime, uh, but I had two opportunities to go, which was amazing. Um, and I have won four Canadian Comedy Awards, um, uh, many of them for shows that were ensembles and then one um, for something I did on my own. And I definitely do not have a bachelor's degree in education minor in English Lit. I have a bachelor's degree in theater. <laughs> minor in English. The minor is still real. But yes, yeah, so <laughs> if anybody has the uh, guess that I do not have that fancy bachelor's degree, you're right. I have a less fancy bachelor's degree. <laughs> you're too particular adding in the degree stuff. Ah. Oh, see, see, people can tell my lies. That's very, Nancy, well done. Um, if we were playing poker, Nancy, you would, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be um, pooched because you would know my tells. Hmm. Interesting. I'll keep that in but mind. I, I know. I'm going to keep, I'm going to take that note too, because she's right. The English lit probably, it was too much. I'm learning today. Uh, this is great. Thank you all. So are we going to uh, uh, turn it around to them now? Yes, I would love for you guys to now go into the chat and put in, put in uh, three things about you, two that are true and one that is a lie. And let's see if uh, Leslie and I can pull out some of these lies. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna grab a paper here so I can. Flown a plane, gone on archeolo archeological dig have, oh, that's going very fast. Have a degree in chemistry. A one room school. Uh, Amy Barr, I'm gonna say that the, tr the lie is that you have a, um, a bachelor in French. Amy, is that the lie? Let's see what she says. <gasps> Ooh, I see a good one. She never traveled abroad. Oh, she never traveled about. Oh, okay. I was wondering if that was it. Uh, I'm going to go back to Angie real quick. Angie was said she was on a TV show in Hawaii when she was a kid. I have two, I have taught in a juvenile psychiatric, psychiatric lockdown unit and I have two cats. I mean, it would be great if the two cats was the lie because it's so simple. Uh, so I'm going to go with Angie. The lie is that you have two cats and the other two things are true. Is that true, Angie? Angie Gage? You're okay. right. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm going to look at this one. Okay. So, um, uh, from Yvonne, I have a motorcycle license. I have soloed in a small plane and I have three dogs. Okay. I have three dogs. So I want to believe you have three dogs so that we are connected. Um, I also had a motorcycle license. I have soloed in a small plane. That sounds really impressive. I'm going to say that's also true. I'm going to say that three dogs is a lie actually, because I hope you have four. Yvonne, tell me. Do, do, do. You're right. Oh, she has no dog. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay. Right. But very the lie, but not the <laughs> just of the lie. These are great. Let me do just one more, and then we'll move on to all this because this is so great. Also, thank you, Bethany. Somewhere in there, I see that the pet snake came back, which I really appreciate. <laughs> uh, okay, I have to go to Gretchen because I saw her refer to Charlton Heston earlier, but now she's got all three, so I want to look at that. So Gretchen tells us once met Charlton Heston, ooh, Moses himself, and uh, Ben Hur. He played so many uh, great epic roles. Um, hold on, going back here. Spent a weekend in a funeral home. Okay, leaned over the edge of the cliffs at Mo Moore. Moore. 
Ireland. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, I feel like the Charlton Heston has got to be true. I don't know why. Somehow my heart wants it to be true. Um, I'm going to say it's a lie that you spent a weekend in a funeral home, Gretchen. I don't know why. Maybe I'm wrong. Gretchen, is that the lie? No. Ooh. Okay, Ayumi, do you want to go? Let's see what Gretchen's... It's, so, so now we're down to Charlton Heston or, um, or the uh, leaned over the cliffs in Ireland. I feel like it's the, the cliffs because we want the Charlton. Oh, she's already revealed. Okay. You're right. It's the cliffs. Wow. Cool. Guys, these are incredible. I want to read them all. They're, um, I'm going to say this chat so that I can read it. These are, you, what an interesting group of people um, that we get to work with today. So thank you so much for sharing. That was really fun. Um, okay, so that's uh, Two Truths and a Lie. It's a very fun game to play with people that you're starting to get to know a little bit and want to um, reveal yourself a little bit to other people. Uh, and now I shall hand it back to Leslie. Yes, thank you so much. And I, the other thing that I think is a great segue into what we're going to do today is that two truths and a lie is a great way to get people uh, telling their stories, right? Because now we could go through and I could say, wait, Gretchen, tell me more about because she says she stood at the edge of that cliff, then Gretchen could, but you know, she didn't lean over. So then this would, you right, it's a great way to get people to start talking about their stories. And we all have personal stories and things about our lives and things that we want to share with people. So what we're going to do today is talk about storytelling. So we're going to start with something that might feel a little bit basic, but it's a great place to start when thinking about what is an actual story, because we need to tell stories in life um, all the time. For some of you, um, as Dawn put it yesterday, it might be, you know, just a mother trying to, <laughs> trying to get a story across to her children. It might be a clergy uh, um, uh, member, uh, you know, trying to express something to, uh, to a group in, in some sort of group setting. It might be two people one-on-one -on -one trying to, um, you you know, uh, uh, have a conversation and that a story within that conversation can help to get points across. So it's, there's all kinds of different ways that stories and telling a good story in our lives are useful. So what is a story? Well, stories have beginning, middle and end, obviously, right? This is not new to any of you, but they also have transformation and change within them. And that's sort of at the core of every story. Something is, happens at the beginning and is different. There's different circumstances at the end. So the first uh, activity I just wanna do is so simple. So get ready into the chat. So let's start with talking about what is a transformation. So another way to think of transformation is the before and the after. So an example of a very simple transformation is I was hungry and now I'm full right? What's the story that got me from A to B? Another example of a before and after might be I was wet and now I'm dry. Or a more exciting story might be the time I was completely dry and then got completely wet, right? But you can see that they're basically opposites or before and afters. Um, so just if you could load into the chat right now, what are some before and afters? Just things like that. Can you think of any um, like wet, dry, hungry, full, um, single, married, um, things like that. Mm -hmm. Asleep awake is great. Yep, yep, energized, tired. Dirty, clean, yep, mm -hmm. Closed, open, perfect. Long hair, just shaved head, thank you. Married, divorced, absolutely. Sitting, standing. Oh, that's a guy. I'd love to hear that story. Driving park. <laughs> Childless mother of multiples. Oh my goodness. How quickly did that happen? Uh, angry, full, in debt. Not in debt. That would be Broken, great. Broken, healed. Mm -hmm. Yep. These are all great. All right. These are fantastic. Just for fun, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick one and we're all going to work from the same one just for now, just to see how different everybody's stories are. So I'm just going to scroll here. Oh, there's so many good ones. How do I even choose? Give me one second. Let's go from, I very much enjoyed, uh, let's go from, um, actually, I'm going to take the dirty to clean, but I'm going to invert it for us. So let's make the first, it's, we're going to go from clean to dirty. So somehow this is the story of the time that you were clean and then you got dirty. So all I want you to do is write a three line story that tells me, you know, I woke up and yeah, or, or I won't use dirty and clean. Uh, so let's say I was using the wet dry example or the dry wet. I would say, um, I woke up this morning uh, to, um, and was completely, uh, and, and went to the kitchen to make coffee. That's the first line. The second line would be my coffee maker exploded all over the kitchen. And the last line is soaked. I had to clean up all the broken glass. That's the whole story with the transformation that I went from dry to wet. And it's just three simple lines. Does that sound clear and doable? Yeah. And so, so make sure there are three lines, three sentences. Three and sentences. hit enter once you have all three sentences done. Yes, perfect. And remember, we're going from the time you were clean and then you got dirty. What happened? What were the three steps? 
Oh boy. The first one's already great. <laughs> Keep them coming. These are amazing. Yep. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Yes. Keep these coming in. These are great. These are great. So I'm just going to go back and just, just read a couple really quick just because the, the, uh, there's so many great ones coming in, but I, I do have to acknowledge the very first one, which made me laugh very loudly. Um, I was clean after my shower. I stepped into the hallway and slipped on dog poop. Then I was dirty. It's great. But I equally love the second one because this person, uh, Janelle, used a very, uh, she was great. Her second line is just one word and it's so effective. I went to return a library book. Plop. Now I'm covered in bird shit. <laughs> um, those are great. Uh, Ayumi, I don't know if you spotted any favorites, but feel free to jump in if you did. Uh, oh, I have one more while you're looking. Mm -hmm. um, I jumped out of the shower. My son ran in from playing in the yard. I jumped back in the shower. <laughs> Clearly, that made a mess. This is great. Wonderful, Crystal, thank you. Um, Laurel, I went to feed the pigs. I love pigs. They were rambunctious. They splashed muck all over me. I'm sorry. There's another one that's just being close to my heart because again, it has, it has a snake in it. Um, I came <laughs> out of the shower. I fell over the snake. I pooped. <laughs> <laughs> Gina. <laughs> These are phenomenal. Oh my goodness. Oh. So great. Um, thank you for all of these. Oh, poor uh, could, Kathy. I started my children's sermon when kid threw up on me. I stink. <laughs> and just that, you know, sometimes just those words, like I already, I can smell it on your behalf. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely, I am, I am in your pain. This is amazing. It's like haiku. It is not unlike haiku, Sarah. You're right. Okay, this is great. So hold on to those stories. You've got them. I hope you either wrote them down or even if you put them in the chat, just sort of remember what you've got there. Because now what I want you to do is extrapolate a little bit. Or is that the right? Yeah, I think that's the, yeah, what, what I mean is add detail, right? So now you're going to take your three line story. And again, don't worry if it's not exact, but you know what you, what you typed. And you're going to add two more lines to make it a five line story. So I want you to add a line between line one and line two and another one between line two and line three. So maybe it's a detail, maybe it's one more um, you know, adjective or describing word. So go ahead and see if you can add, make your three line story a five line story. And we'll see if we recognize any of them coming in. And just be sure to wait till you have written everything before you hit send, otherwise it's gonna come out in pieces. Yeah, just noting a couple as we go here. <laughs> okay, give you just another, you know, 30 seconds here just to, uh, to see if you can add to your stories. So great. Ooh, Yvonne's got something great going on here. All right, all right, let's start to look at some of these, but keep them going if you, uh, yes. All right, I'm gonna pull um, from a couple that we heard of last time, and then we can also look at some other ones as well. Gina, I see you, well, let's, okay, let's start here. So Gina, as you remember, fell over a snake and then pooped. So this time she said, I got out of the shower smelling like vanilla. I fell over the snake, just chilling. I pooped running out the door. <laughs> so what happened here is Gina actually just left it to three lines, which is okay because what she did is she still completed the task of adding more detail, right? She could have made those five different sentences, but she definitely added detail. She smelled like vanilla. That gives us more of a visual, right? The, the, the snake was just laying there. Now we can kind of picture what the snake was doing and what those circumstances were. And she added the action of she didn't just poop. She pooped running out the door, which is great. Um, uh, you know, on the poop theme, because yes, we're on a course. theme, uh, Angie, because um, this was the original, I think, that we first read. I got out of the shower. I heard the dog barking in the hallway. I stepped into the hall and slipped in dog poop. My husband laughed at me. 
now I am dirty and so is he. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. I love that part that he is also dirty and we can only infer why he is also dirty. Absolutely. But it's so great. Even the fact that the dog was barking sort of gives us that little bit of suspense or um, something, you know, when you're reading a story or hearing a story, you know something is about to happen. So it kind of teased us a little bit. Um, I swear we're not just trying to do poop ones, but um, I, I do want to go back to the library to Janelle with the bird because as we remember, she had a very simple one word middle line, which I found very interesting. So let's see what she added on either side of that. So Janelle said, I went to the library to return a book. The sunshine, uh, the sun shined and I turned to enjoy it. So now she's created this ethereal moment. Plop. I shouldn't have tested my luck. Now I'm covered in bird shit. <laughs> so again, I think what's great about that is uh, what Janelle added was the, um, again, a very um, a description of the moment. So it also inferred emotion. She was enjoying the day. Things were going so well, then things weren't going so well. Um, she also added with the, I shouldn't have tested my luck. Maybe we're learning a little more about that character now that this is somebody who is sort of often has bad luck or thinks they often have bad luck. But I thought those were really cool details that she added in there. And I'm just going to see if there's any more. And again, Ayumi, if you see one that's intriguing, feel free to pull it out. Um, there is, there was the, the uh, vomit one again, which I feel like we should revisit. Um, I started the children's sermon. Five kids sat around me and one looked noticeably green. She threw up on me. She looked much better instantly. I stink. <laughs> I saw great. Yes. But again, that context of like now the, the kid looks better, but now you're right. There was like an extra transformation for that other character as well. Oh yeah, that's so great. I just want, I'll do one more. This isn't one that we heard from before, but I kind of, I, I think it's, in, I, I remember seeing it as it's rolled through. So let's look at Car Carolyn or Car I think it's Carolyn or maybe Caroline. Carolyn uh, wrote, I once powder, put powdered lemonade into club soda. It started to bubble over. Then it exploded all over my head. I got so wet, my hair was all wet and yellow. And I feel like um, she added, uh, if we would have to go back and look at her original, but what I am seeing here is, again, more detail. How it opened, even words like exploded, um, and, the, and then the final line of like, my hair was all yet and yellow, she's just giving more details. So I would love to read more of these, but I guess we, but we have to move on because we have so many things to talk about today. But I hope that very simple activity which I know is a very basic intro to storytelling, literally. But I hope it did a couple of things. One being to take away the pressure of, oh my gosh, I have to tell a story. Oh, I got it like that. So that they can be very simple. And that even when you are starting them or starting to put together what you want to say or how you want to say it, you can start with where I want to start from and where I want to end up. Right. And then you can always go in and fill in the details in the middle and note that some of the details that you were filling in were things like emotion. They were things like um, specific points of view of character. They were things like um, uh, a descriptors, sort of creating a picture, painting a picture for somebody. And all of those things are uh, vital uh, skills that when all put together can tell a really great story. So I think that is it for storytelling. But listen, they're all so great. Uh, I'm with Ayumi. I think I'm going to save this chat and read them after. They're, <laughs> they're so great. great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, so um, in that last ex uh, exercise, Leslie alluded to things like emotion. So this next exercise uh, for storytelling, we're going to look at how emotion can affect story. Um, so to get us started, Leslie and I are going to do a scene for you. It's a very basic scene with a beginning, middle, end, just like we talked about in that last exercise. And I'm going to need help from you in the chat of a very simple transaction. It could be buying bread, picking up laundry, um, dropping off kids to school, something like that. Just a very simple transactional thing that one might do in a day. <clears throat> just give us some suggestions. Doing the dishes, going to the bakery, buying the coffee. Okay. <clears throat> Because uh, I love coffee, uh, I'm going to grab that suggestion of buying a coffee. So this is just a very neutral scene. Uh, one of us is going to be buying coffee from the other person. We are, we're improvisers, so we're not even going to decide that in advance. We're just going to take you to this quick scene. Can I help you? Uh, yes, i just like a uh, black Americano. Okay, great. Anything else? Would you like a breakfast sandwich or breakfast pastry today? Uh, no, I'll, I'll just take the black Americana. All right. Okay. And there you go. That will be uh, 
275. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Uh, can you just uh, type in your um, pin number there on the pad? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, uh, there's your card. Do you need the receipt? No, that's fine. All right. Well, have a great day. Um, thanks for coming to Phillips. Thank you. Okay. Uh, no need to applause. I know it was a fantastic, fantastic presentation, uh, but we're going to make it even more exciting for you uh, with your help. So um, this time I'd like a suggestion for emotion. So when we think about emotions, I like to think about four overarching emotions, happy, mad, sad, and scared. Mm -hmm. uh, and then most emotions can fall under one of those categories. Um, the first one that came up from Janelle was hysterical. <laughs> okay, great. All right. So we will show you the scene again. We are going to try to keep the script exactly the same, uh, but this time we'll both be hysterical. Can I, can I help you? What can I get you? I'm black, I'm black, I'm here, I got him. Okay, okay, okay. Can I get you anything else? No. Back for sandwich or ice cream? Oh God. Take it, take it. <laughs> It'll be 275, it's 275. <laughs> Type in your pin. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your card. Do you need a receipt? <laughs> Thanks for coming to film. Phil. <laughs> it's tiring. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just a little warm. After that one, I might have to remove my uh, sweater. Yes, uh, thank you for that. No, I'm time. hysterical. <laughs> okay. So, same, same scene, we did not change any of the dialogue. All we did was layer one emotion on for both of us. So this time to show you one more example how emotion can really affect the narrative, even though the narrative um, is technically the same, we're gonna get two different emotions. So um, Leslie, do you wanna pick one for me and I will pick one for you? Yes, I do. So maybe load a couple more emotions in there for us. Uh, remember even things like, uh, like, like we had anxious before, like. Um, under those umbrellas, fear, joyful, that's great. Depressed is great. Um, prickly, rattled, nervous. I'm going to give you, I, mean, I think I'm going to give you depressed. That's going to be depressed. your state of being or your emotion. Yeah. Okay. And because I know you and I know oh, no. where, where it is, you are going to be joyful. Okay. Great. Great. Joyful. And I'm going to be depressed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, what can I get for you today? Black Americana. Oh, fabulous choice. <laughs> oh, can I interest you in a breakfast sandwich or maybe a pastry today? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, yes. All right, there you go. Enjoy it. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, got it? <laughs> Good. Um, it's going to be two seventy five. Isn't that a great deal? Oh, oh, got it. Okay. Oh, if you could uh, punch your pin in, that'd be great. Oh, ah, no problem. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Okay, uh, there is your card. <laughs> and uh, hey, do you want your receipt? All right, no worries. I uh, I save these and make them into notepads. Well, thanks thanks for coming to Phillips. <laughs> okay. End <I'm> scene. <laughs> so sad though. I know. Listen, I know. I'm sorry. Really. Um, so that, do, do we, should we do one more quick one? How? Maybe. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do a, a super quick one then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cause there were so many great uh, suggestions here. Do you want to pull a, a suggestion, uh, for, uh. Yes. You're going to be, I, I like this one. Nervous. You're nervous. Oh, okay. How does that sound? Sure. Nervous. Um, 
and uh, you're going to be impatient. Impatient. Great. Okay. Uh, what can I get for you? Uh, uh, black American can 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 I can Americano? Is it an Amer is, that you, is that what you're trying to say? Is is that how you pronounce American can cano? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just I'll just start making it. Look, do you want a a breakfast sandwich or a pastry? Uh, uh, uh no, no, mm -mm. no. Nope. Great. Okay, there you go. There it is. All right, 275. 275? It's 275 is the price. Uh, <sighs> there's there's a line. It's just there's a big line. Thank you. Oh. Your pin? Oh. Um. Oh my god, okay, yeah, you know, you know what, you know what, it, it's on me, it's on me. Take your card, take your card, just, just get out of my store. Thank, great, nice having you at Phillips, get it, get, please don't come back, get. Can I get a receipt? There, I wrote you a receipt. <laughs> or a free coffee. Or a free coffee. Amazing. Amazing. All right. I did see someone say, oh yes, Amanda, I'm OMG, I'm definitely Leslie in this scenario. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right, well, thank you guys. Thanks for those great suggestions. And so that, that's just an example of showing how uh, a story can be greatly affected just by layering an emotion on and you know whether everyone has the same emotion or different characters have differing emotions and you can see how having emotions that can conflict and dovetail with each other and like so my nervousness really affected Leslie's mm -hmm. impatience you could see that that was helping to build so helping to build tension and in, in a narrative just through adding emotion can really do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Yes. Um, did you want no, no, I was just going to say, absolutely. I, I feel like you put it perfectly when you talk about the heavy lifting, because again, sometimes when we're thinking about how to make a story engaging or how to, how to create a character, um, something as simple as inserting emotional or an emotional state, um, not only, again, like you say, helps create tension and make things happen in the story, create more um, stakes for the story, but it's also so real to life as, as you know, um, as uh, oh, I'm so sorry, I forget her name. Uh, Amanda, Amanda, as Amanda said, this is so real to me, like, or I'm, I'm in this scenario. So it can be a relatable thing too to add emotion into stories. Yeah. Great. Okay. So moving on, we're going to do a fun little exercise called Antique Roadshow. Uh, so what's going to happen is we're going to get a suggestion uh, from you guys of something that you might find in your office, in an office, just an object, an everyday item. Um, uh, <laughs> a desk, a succulent, a, succulent. A, book, <laughs> a coffee mug. Oh, great. Okay, good. Um, so because, uh, great. So what I'm going to do, you can hold your suggestion. We've got something great. Uh, we're going to take you to Antiques Roadshow. Okay. <clears throat> I, um, wow. I, so yeah, please tell us about your item. Okay. So uh, my sisters and I were clearing out our attic and, um, you know, we just found a bunch of old records, all those kinds of things. And then my eldest sister found this uh, coffee mug. I believe it's... Um, a special there's a, there's a uh, a far a barn on the one side and then oh, th it looks like there's also remnants of some kind of I don't know if that is some kind of special print but I, I don't know my sisters got really excited we thought that this could be worth a lot of money so we wow. just to bring it I mean Sorry. absolutely let me take a look I just want to sort of feel it I'll let you hold it but I'm just gonna sort of yeah I'm sort of feeling some of the texture you know absolutely it's so interesting you said that your sisters. Uh, found this because this is what I'm seeing here is an early 19th century um, original hand painted um, ceramic mug. Um, the stain you're seeing on there from the um, um, is from a, um, a, a lady's lips in the early 1900s. They used to uh, color their lips with um, 
beet juice. And as we all know, beet juice, uh, it leaves very permanent stains. Um, so that is probably a stain that'll never come out, but I think that only increases the value of your mug. Um, now I have to say, you said that this was exciting for your sisters. Do you have a personal uh, um, uh, connection or interest in farming? Um, well, well, that's the thing, we don't. So yeah. we thought that um, it was kind of this interesting sign that uh, these four city urban gals should come across something that was so um, new to us, um, wow. you know, mm -hmm. uh, that how is it that someone in our family had, had a mug like this? So that's why we, we realized it must be truly special. Well, it is. And that makes so much sense that you actually do not have an affinity for farming because back in the early 19th century, the people who were purveyors and purchasers of uh, such a thing were people who had never been to or seen a farm. This was very exotic for them. This yes. was very exciting for them to see a life that they were not familiar with and to have that and bring it into their own home and serve um, teas and coffees and waters lemonades mm -hmm. to dignitaries that would come you know to visit this was definitely an item purchased by the upper class is i think what i'm what i'm trying to tell you and people who yeah. certainly were, were strangers to france this this i'm gonna estimate this is yeah. all, uh, yeah. this is a fifteen thousand dollar mug what? i almost broke it <laughs> okay oh well careful now careful now <laughs> okay wow I would hold on to that and I would, I would start, uh, I, I can recommend some, some buyers for you for sure, but I, I think you shouldn't take anything less than the 15. Okay, thank you so much, thank you. It's my pleasure. I am an antique specialist, clearly. <laughs> thank, you know, it's funny, Mary was suggesting we need to look at the, the, the marks on the bottom. I was going to show you that, but then I realized that I would go from clean to dirty because all the coffee that was inside it that I was trying to hide from the camera would be all over me and then we'd have to write another three line Sorry, we have to go back to the beginning of the workshop. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but I like a good point, says Mary. But Mary, I like that when you are going to be appraising mugs, you'll know what to do, which is important. Absolutely. I almost tilted. And I thought, no, nah, it's too, it's too dangerous. Too dangerous for this. Uh, okay, great. Do you want to try one more? Thing? I'd love to. Yes. So, so maybe something that you might find in your bathroom. We'll I'm ready to run. Suggestions for something. And Leslie will go try to find something from hers. Uh-huh. 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 Uh -huh. It's funny, I saw hippo, but my chat had like scrolled up to yoga poses. All right, okay. Okay, All right. All right. okay. off you go. Okay, we've got, she's off hunting for something, so we don't need any more suggestions, but those are all great. Thank you so much. Good thing my bathroom was close. Okay. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. I, I, this has been, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I need your professional eye on this. Okay. Um, so, You're not going to want to touch it though. Try oh, not to. So I should keep it like this? I would, yeah. I would try to minimize the amount of finger oils that, okay, that, wow. Can you tell me a little bit about this? How, how you came upon this? I'm, so, I, I, this is I'm, the first time I've seen one in person. Oh, that's a, oh, wow, I'm already excited. Okay, so yes, I'll tell you how, how we came across this. So we found this, so I was actually um, in uh, uh, going to a pumpkin patch uh, with, with some, some girlfriends. And we, <clears throat> we stopped at a roadside yard sale, of all things. And I think these people, they had a lot of nice stuff. I don't think they knew what they were selling. Right, right. But I came across this and was just drawn to its shape and texture. Wow. And a girlfriend of mine said, you got to grab that. That's worth something. And I said, you're crazy, Sharice. And she said, nope, I, I'm sane. And I know that this is worth something. And I think I was just so intrigued by, uh, again, by- okay, Try not to touch it. Try not to touch it. Try not to now. Now, wh wh I just have to ask, what did you pay for this item? I, I paid uh, three fifty, three dollars and fifty cents. Okay. I tell you to sit down if you had a chair, but there's, so do you have any idea what this is? I, you know, I don't, and Sharice couldn't even tell me, but she just knew it was worth something. Yes, okay, this is very, very special. So what you're looking at right there is a perfect, I, I haven't seen, okay, I've only seen them in books, but this looks like it is in perfect, pristine condition. So back in the day, royalty, whenever they gave birth to uh, the new heir, if this new heir was born without hair, they would then have their master 
barber create one of these infant wigs. So this is an infant wig what? that is so specific for royalty, for the heir, the new heir. And so it was only, and again, if the heir was born with hair, there would be no need for this type of wig. So that wig is handcrafted from the finest silk. So that is a silk wig, handcrafted strand by strand. But that's why it's so small. Um, and, and it would be hung by what you're holding with there, there, right? And uh, the, it would only be clipped off. So that hasn't even been used yet because the ones that are used, they actually clip. So this, this okay, so wow, my mind is one. Okay, so now it's like history is just, okay, so if it has not been used, that means that an heir was born, the barber was sent, the heir was born with that heir, the, the barber was sent to make one of these. He made it, he brought it, the heir passed away before that was put on his head. And that is why the handle has not been clipped. There is only one of this in the world. I, I mean, when you say one in the world, I mean, on my shins, my, my mind is, is blown that there's only one of these in the world and I happen to come upon it. And, and, and you're right, the silky nature, I think that's what drew me to it. Mm -hmm. You know, the House of Lords and how they have those white wigs. So that is sort of how they, it was inspired by this type of wig. I mean, wh what are we looking at here? I mean, do you, do you have a price in mind? Uh, basically, you can name your price. You can go to the Louvre. You can go to the House of Lords. You can go, you could take this worldwide. This is a piece that basically you, highest bidder. Highest bidder. I mean, I, I want to start the bidding at $25,000. Am I crazy? You are. I would start at no less than 2.5 million. I thought you were good. What? Yeah. yeah. I'd be willing to take it off your hands for one million. Well, but I, I don't think so. I think I'm going to try and go for this 2.5. I understand. I understand. But wow. thank you so much for bringing that in. Well, Thank you, and I'll never leave. I'm gonna sleep with it. I'm never letting it out of my sight ever again. Great. Thank you. <laughs> now I'll hang it over here. <laughs> it was dry. It was dry. Hair, <laughs> hair. hair. Yes, I said that. That was amazing. <laughs> Marge. Uh, um, uh, Martha. Great. Okay, great. So, um, yes, this, this, this was a, a, an example of using so, some, a lot of the things that we were teaching you yesterday about um, saying yes, building on, and, and then we also added a lot of justifications, mm -hmm. uh, which is sort of another thing that we use in improv, but we can tell, we can tell a story and we're building off of each other's uh, suggestions and um, emotional uh, excitement, I guess, to, to build, build that story. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like when we're sitting down to write or think of a story or tell our own stories, we can uh, apply yes anding to ourselves as well. Obviously, if, I mean, I always love collaborating and working with others, but if we are working on something of our own, um, taking that moment to remember to say even yes to yourself and to all of your ideas, because you can always go back and edit or cut things later. Um, so being open to creating from abundance, saying yes to all of your ideas whenever you're telling a story or putting something like that together is an amazing and empowering place to start when you're sitting down to put something together or you are coming up with a plan of how you're going to express something to somebody. Go through all the ideas first and then you can always come back and, uh, and uh, oh, it sounds like there might be a, a similar game that you, or, or activity that they've done. Um, uh, but you can always go back and make those cuts and things and things later and find out what's really important to your story. Um, which I think leads us into uh, almost our final activity because this one's going to take a little bit of time, but it's going to be very fun. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so this is um, sort of working in reverse from what we did when we were discussing uh, the story structure. Um, and this is called, this exercise is called shrinking scene. I'm sure there's a million different names we, you can go by. Um, and so what's going to happen is we're going to get a suggestion for a scene from you guys again, uh, or we could take one from previous examples of those transactions. Um, do, uh, 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 I'm like a training a snake. Blessing training a snake. 
Bless you all for the callbacks. I want you to know you're all basically professional improvisers at this point. <laughs> um, well, I feel like we have to honor training a snake. I think we do. Uh, and so what's going to happen is we're going to do a scene for you about training a snake uh, and it's going to take us one minute. So uh, you can halt on, on the chat suggestions for now because we've got it. So thank you for all those great suggestions. Uh, so we, we'll take you to the scene, training a snake. Oh, Bubbles is in a mood today. Okay. What's happening right now is that Bubbles is feeding off of your energy. Oh, my energy. Mm -hmm. okay. Snakes are a very reactive creature. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's looking at me now like, why are you so panicked, you know? Because you're also looking at him the same way. Do you see the way you're looking at him? Oh, uh. You're looking at, yeah, okay. Now do you see his, his, his fangs <laughs> are starting to be covered now. Now he, yep. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, it's he's almost, almost Smiling. smiling. He's smiling. That's right. Okay, wow. okay good. So it's all about using your energy okay. and passing that on through the air to your snake, where okay. your snake will receive it. He's going to wrap him around and... my neck. Okay, right. He's around yeah. my neck. I still have his little head. Um, and that's our time. Oh, great. That was a minute. Okay. That was exactly a minute. Okay, great. So that is training a snake in... Oh, cancel. Stop. Uh, that's, can... that's training a snake in one minute. Uh, now we're gonna figure out how to turn that off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna do the same scene for you, but we're gonna do it in 30 seconds. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Go. Oh, Bubbles is in a mood today. Yes. Well, he's reacting off of your energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Wait, my energy? Yes. You, you are bringing a lot of tension and he's just reacting to that. So if you want him to be calm, you need to be calm. Okay, because he's looking at me right now like panicked. Because you're looking at him panicked. Oh, uh. Yeah, do you now, do you see the smile on his face? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I'm just gonna put him around my neck. Oh, there we go. And that's 30 seconds. Oh, okay, pretty good, pretty good. Okay, good, so same scene, 30 seconds now. Uh, now we're gonna take that all the way down to 10 seconds. So we're going to try to keep that in mind See if we can get that 60 second story down to 10 seconds. Ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bubbles is in a mood. Reacting to your energy. Oh my God, I'm looking at him and he's panicked. Because you're looking panicked. E See? And that's he's time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Okay. So this, so what, you know, just in the chat, I'm going to go to you guys this time. Why, why would we do an exercise like this? What, what is there to be learned from an exercise like this? Simplify. Excellent. Uh, what we most need to tell. Great. Essential. So edit, edit, edit. Paring down the most important ideas. Keeping the basics. Making a long story short. Distilling. Get to the core of the story. Clarify. Excellent. Yeah, I think clarify is a really good, a, a really great word. They're, they're all great, being concise, exactly. Uh, and to keep from losing people's attention, absolutely. So you always want to think of how much time do I have to get my message across? And then the, the clarity and the conciseness is what is my message, right? Going back to that very simple transformation, that before and after, what is the thing that the story is about? And how can I get that across clearly and concisely? Um, and again, if you're creating from abundance, uh, if we sat down to write a story about um, uh, training a snake, we might not have come up with the same 10 second story because we would have, you know, maybe just said, oh, just do this, this and this. But since we started from more and then we were able to bring it down and clarify, because what really we found at the end was what was important about the story. The snake was, uh, was, was, I was nervous and which was making the snake nervous. And if I smiled, then the snake would smile and then we were fine. That was really what was important in the story at the end, right? But we found that out from blowing it up first and then bringing it in. Yes. Yeah. Um, isn't that what they say is writing is about editing? 
Yes, 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 for sure, for sure. Uh, I also like the term to not go on rabbit trails, which is another great thing. Um, yes, because often we might, we, again, what is the goal? Because Mary above Gina also says, what is the goal of the communication? So keeping that. So that's why sometimes starting with an outline of here's my before, here's my middle, here's my end. I can fill in all kinds of details, but then you can start to see if you're starting to go down a rabbit trail and you need to get back on track towards your, towards your ending. And because I'm an animal person, I automatically think, yeah, it's dangerous to take a snake down an, a rabbit trail because then <laughs> the snake will be very distracted and will go all over the place. And that is absolutely true. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Well, I think, you know, we've covered a lot in the last two days. And since we just have 10 minutes left in our presentation, we wanted to go to you and see if there were like to do an overall recap on what we've covered over the last two days and see if there are any questions that you might have. If there's anything that we can provide any extra clarification uh, on any of the concepts that we've covered or any of the exercises, if there are any that you wanted to bring to your own communities, how we could help uh, facilitate that for you. Oh, I missed yesterday. What top two things Great should question. I know? Oh. Great. Um, thank you, Amanda. Uh, oh, you two are great. Thank you. I, I like that I jumped right to the compliment. I'm trying to answer Amanda's <laughs> question. I'm like, oh my God, somebody said something nice. Uh, okay. Amanda, thank you for that question. So yesterday we talked about the concept of yes and, which is a concept that we use at Second City to create our content. But basically at the core of yes and is um, collaborative communication and a way that you can engage in a conversation uh, with someone that does not shut them down right away. So the concept is to say, uh, if Ayumi is speaking to me, she says something to me, instead of cutting her off or saying no right away or jumping in with my idea, I take a moment and I say yes, which is basically a way of saying yes is the equivalent to, you could also replace it with, I hear you, right? And it means that you have listened to the end of what she had to say. You're acknowledging that I hear you and here's what I think. And we try to use and more than but or no, because but is like a secret no. No can be very deflating and can sort of, uh, again, um, alienate people right away, make them not want to share, make them not want to engage. Um, and even but kind of indicates your thing was fine, but mine is better, right? It still indicates that there's something that we're not really truly listening. So I really like to challenge people to try to do this in their life. And believe me, I avoid many arguments um, by, by employing this, by just saying, even if I disagree with somebody, I can go, yes. And I might even add in real life, yes, I hear you. And I think this thing about that. And just by giving my own thoughts, my own opinions, we can start to engage in conversation rather than cutting up in, well, you're wrong and I'm right and you're wrong and I'm right, which can stall communication. That's what I would say about yes and. Yeah. yeah. And to add to that, I would say the, the other part of that listening piece is oh. listening to comprehend versus listening to respond. A lot of times in our interactions with people, we're very eager to respond. So we may not listen to a person to the end. Right? And we might be missing a lot of what they might be offering. We've been taught so, uh, socially to nod and, and sometimes interject to show that we're listening and engaged, which is nice. And I feel for myself, if someone listens to the end um, and then responds once I'm done, then I really feel listened to, especially if it's, if it's uh, received with a yes and. So really trying to fight that impulse to jump into somebody's um, discussion or, or opinion or whatever they're talking about before they're done um, communicating their idea. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. I see a really great question here that I just wanted because I think I might be, I, I got this, uh, from Kathy. Kathy says, review what to do when someone says something totally absurd in the yes and scenario. Absolutely. And this one is great because as teachers of, of sketch comedy, uh, we have lots of absurd ideas pitched to us all the time where I'm, there's often times where I go, eh, this is not gonna, but um, it's all about the collaboration. So I think in a couple that that's in comedy though, in, in life, we can be, it can all be transferred though. I think again, Kathy, in this case, it's simply a matter of when I say yes to you, it doesn't mean that I'm absolutely going to do your idea. It doesn't mean that when, again, when um, we use the example of the jumping off the cliff yesterday, right? That if, uh, you know, we're standing there and then Ayumi says, let's jump off this cliff. And I just go, yes. Um, it's a matter of saying, yes, I hear you. And we need, and, and maybe it is that we need to do some things to make that work. 
so uh, there's two different things. So that's one example with, in that example of the jumping, let's jump off a cliff. Yes, and let's get some parachutes first would be an example of taking an absurd idea and whatever. Now that is absurd. I'm sure you don't have people asking you to jump off cliffs every day, but a more sort of realistic one might be if you are in some sort of, maybe you're a brainstorming session or there's something that you're you know, on a committee and you're trying to come to ideas together, saying the yes just continues to um, make sure that everybody knows that their ideas, even if they're absurd, are on the table. And it might mean saying like, yes, I hear that idea and let's, keep looking for some more. It might be, it might be as simple as that. Um, I mean, I'd love to talk to you some more if I knew an exact example, but I think, Ayumi, you touched on something great on this yesterday, which was that idea that, um, again, saying the yes and having the idea is that it might spark another idea, right? So it might be that, yes, somebody suggests something that's either not realistic, it's just not going to work. Maybe you don't have it in the budget, Right. But if we start with the, um, hey, I want to throw, you know, a, a, a huge gala and then we say, yes. And how can we make that work with our budget? And then it ends up being, you know, a backyard picnic. Um, that's fine because that's what was realistic and doable at the end. But taking, oh, I know what it was. I mean, you had talked about um, what's at the core, what's at the base of that idea. So if someone says, I want to have a big gala. Yes. And tell me more about what that idea means to you. Tell me more about what gala means to you, because it might just mean I want to get together with people and socialize. I want to do something really fun. It could be as simple as that. And if you stop and ask another, say yes to them, let them know you heard them, ask some more questions, then perhaps you can, you can come up with something that is realistic and is less absurd. Does that make sense? I think something that um, people get caught up on is when we say yes, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a literal yes, mm -hmm. right? It's not the will you marry me, yes. The yes that we're proposing is a conceptual yes, mm -hmm. right? Because I see here someone said, let's do person church, in-person church with singing and no masks. So if someone proposes that idea to me, uh, what I want to do is understand what is underlying that, right? And the mm -hmm. way I'm going to get to that is by opening up a discussion. If I say no right away, it kills any potential for understanding what's underlying uh, this dangerous proposal. So if so, someone comes up to me and say, hey, let's do this in-person church uh, singing with no masks, they say, yes, I hear that you're interested in having no masks while singing. Uh, tell me about why you're interested in doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, it brings this, it brings, so, so that we can really start to probe. If I say no right away, then that person feels shut off and cut down. If I say yes to the conversation, so think about it, the yes is being saying yes to the conversation mm -hmm. and we're going to move forward with this. Okay. So you find out actually they, they miss being in close community with someone. Okay, great. So what are some ways we can have close community with, uh, without putting each other at risk? So Saying yes allows us to really open up a discussion and find out what's underlying people's real desires and um, collaborating with them. If we don't start, if we start without a yes, it ends any potential for that kind of collaboration. Mm -hmm. I hope that's clear.